What's going on, fellas? I, uh, I tossed up a community post the other day uh, asking for any nutrition tips that you guys had. We got a couple. So today's video is just going through these, uh, these questions and giving my opinions on them. Thank you guys, as always, for your participation. It means a lot to me. Um, and if you enjoy the video, please remember to like it. If you don't enjoy it, don't like it. No problem. Um, the first question that I was asked is, it's widely known that eating a large amount of food the day before a heavy training session can make your lifts easier. Some people even take it so far as to purposely bloat up before the training session as they say that helps them lift more. Why does it help people lift more? Uh, I'm assuming they aren't any developing, I'm assuming they are not developing any more muscle in that short of a period of time, so kind of interested what allow, what about the food allows them to lift more. Um, okay, so the first thing we can look at is the people who are going to have the most drastic impact are people who are in a depleted state, so people who are in a um, caloric deficit. If they go and take a high day, a high calorie day, um, prior to a training session, they'll notice their performance is greatly boosted because they're not in a drained state. That one is pretty self-explanatory. No, they're not, um, they're not putting on any muscle, but they're filling up and they're topping out their intramuscular glycogen stores. Um, yeah, that's, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Maybe you're going to get more sodium in, more carbs in. Uh, that one explains itself, but people who are eating an isocaloric diet, so eating maintenance, or people who are eating a surplus, uh, does bloating up before a session or taking a high day the day before a session make as drastic of impact? No, especially if they're already bulking. Um, taking a high day the day before, every day is a high day on some level. Um, you won't see as drastic of increases, though you might see some, just depending on the person, depending on the lift. Um, and as far as whether bloating will improve your lift and why it might, one of the things that we're potentially looking at is that we are maximizing our intramuscular water storage. That's a lot of what bloating is, is retaining a shit ton of water. The more that water retaining in the muscles, um, potentially maybe that has some implications on force output. Uh, part of that might be a leverage thing by physically bloating, we get more structural stability in something like a squat. If our stomach is a little bit distended, it presses into our thighs a little bit earlier in the lift and can yield uh, improvement in performance. So what I would say is it's person to person and it's lift to lift. I, for example, um, do notice that if I come in with a couple extra pounds of water above where I normally walk around at, I retain it. Let's say I'm retaining about three, four extra pounds of water weight. Uh, my benching will feel stronger, presumably just because of that greater uh, intramuscular water, greater intramuscular total volume. Um, a lot of the benefit from creatine is speculated that we're actually getting some of that benefit not from uh, the create phosphocreatine cycle, which is the idea, but some of that is just coming from improving our intramuscular water retention. Uh, speculative but it can tie into the same thing so maybe on a bench day coming in bloated I personally benefit from uh, some people will find squatting as long as you don't feel like you're gonna throw up like I said you can kind of get that structural stability from coming in uh, a little bit bloated but something like the deadlift usually that will actually actively work against you uh, because you won't be able to achieve as efficient of starting positions uh, if your stomach is distended and it's getting in the way so maybe it would have the exact opposite effect. Coming in bloated not only would have no effect, but it would move you backwards actively um, in something like the deadlift. As far as the mechanism, I am a subscriber to the theory that it probably comes down to intramuscular water retention and you know maxing out your intramuscular glycogen stores, uh, though I'm all ears for any other potential mechanisms of action. I'm not really familiar with any studies looking at bloat maxing. So... Uh, yeah, that would be my answer. The next question is, nutrition for advice for a college student power lifter. I attempt to get one gram of protein per body weight and hit my surplus, uh, but that's probably half of, I probably, that's probably half the days I can manage that. So he's, he's missing the mark half the days. Uh, you know, it's, what is it, the five Ps, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance, that might be six. Uh, you need to have a plan coming into the day to get in. If you, let's say you know on average you probably need to break it into five separate meals to hit that caloric surplus without having to just stuff your face and die. Uh, you know it's five. You need to have a plan with your class schedule that day, with your training schedule that day. You need to have spots picked for where you're going to get those five meals. Maybe you can have one 
Uh, you can take it home. You can take, order something out. You can do whatever you need to, but making a plan each day is probably going to be the single biggest thing as far as improving that consistency. Um, having something as a panic meal in your dorm can be nice. Um, I used to keep packets of Uncle Ben's, I, uh, Uncle Ben's microwavable rice uh, and cans of tuna in my dorm in case I didn't have a means of getting another meal. I could still hit my macros. Oh, and some olive oil. Uh, I could still hit my macros for a meal. It was very cheap because I was very poor. I still am very poor, but I can prepare better now. Um, so I'd say the biggest, yeah, the biggest thing just comes down to like meal prepping in college isn't really feasible for most people. And that's okay. Um, it is feasible, but you're not going to do it. And I can respect that because I wasn't very good about doing it. You might not even have the, uh, the facilities to do so in your dorm. Uh, but what I would tell you that preparation, you know, even if it's just preparing to know you're going to hit the meal hall at certain times or knowing you have to bring some food with you to this class that allows you to eat, uh, it all comes down to coming up with a plan roughly in your head the day before and then being willing to adjust that plan as you go through the day if things emerge. But, you know, trying to not compromise. Uh, you know, you have those two concrete goals, which I think are exactly what your goals should be, which is to hit that protein allotment and to hit the caloric surplus. I think that's a good priority system. It's just those two things uh, are the easiest to manage, but also yield the best returns. Um, just making sure you come in with a plan every day. Um, I'd say that's the biggest thing. The next question is how to optimize recovery slash training with less protein. Uh, 140 to 160 grams so that depends on how big you are if you're 140 to 160 pounds it's probably about as much as you're going to be able to utilize in any meaningful manner so that's not limited protein but if you're heavier than that okay uh should i train less hard ideally i would eat i would like more protein but however i do not have the money and i train with a minimal home gym setup uh squat stands wonky barbell bench uh 440 pounds of plates and 20 pound dumbbells um, as far as the money goes, um, if this means a lot to you, I would, if you don't already have one, get a job on the weekend or weekends. Uh, there's lots of places hiring all over right now, unless you're somewhere that's like heavily locked down. If this means a lot to you, just work, uh, work a shift each weekend and one shift will get you a shit ton of bland chicken breasts. If you have a shit ton of bland chicken breasts and you have some seasoning, you can hit a greater protein allotment per day. Um, if you're not going to do that, that's whatever, that's fine. You're like, no, I don't really want to work weekends or no, I don't have the time. Um, and I, there's no way I can get my hands on any cheap protein such as uh, chicken breast, probably the cheapest you're going to get or milk if you can digest it. If you can't, um, you're stuck at that 140 to 160. 140 to 160 isn't terrible. It's really not that bad. Uh, no, you should certainly not train less hard. You, uh, you have to think let's dial back like the scientific approach realistically you are not going to get stronger and bigger by training less hard unless you're an absolute maniac and that's where you're training at right now uh, more than likely you probably need to train harder to maximize your results i don't know who you are um, but i'd feel pretty confident in that bet that the results would be better from harder training not less hard training if you find that your recovery capabilities aren't that great due to that protein intake, which they should be, 140 to 160 isn't that bad. Uh, but if you find you're under recovering, I would rather you dial back your volume, uh, but not dial back how hard you're training. The training should be hard. More than likely, you need to do hard stuff to drive any meaningful adaptation, so we should never deviate from that. Uh, Man, I don't know. I just say work within the, the volume constraints that you have with your current recovery capabilities, um, given that intake. Maybe eating some extra carbs if you have those around the house uh, and you don't have to like pay for them. Pro carbs are protein sparing, so maybe we can get potentially um, better, better effects from pushing the carbs a little bit more if we can't push the protein. Um, that could be a potential way, but as far as how to optimize recovery, by definition, you can't really optimize it if we're missing one of the most important variables. But within that, we could bump our carbs a little bit, adjust our volume if need be. Uh, but no, man, I, that's, that's enough that I don't think it should make any practically significant uh, changes. Train hard, it'll work. Um, and then the last question for the day was how to optimize the pre-workout meal. So that's a great one. Um, I guess you have to ask the, uh, the question of what are we trying to get done in the pre-workout meal? And first and foremost, we're trying to fill up 
our, our intramuscular glycogen stores, especially if we're in a depleted state. So making sure that we intake sufficient carbohydrates is kind of priority number one. Alongside priority number one, we want to make sure that we're not bloating to a level that negatively impacts that lift for the day. So that's going to affect our sourcing of the carbohydrates, but that's also going to affect the quantity of the carbohydrates kind of can be selected based on what we're doing for the day, maybe a little bit less for a deadlift session. So we have the carbohydrates, they're sourcing, uh, making sure we get enough and not so much that we get bloated and from a source that doesn't bloat us, potentially including some fruit for some fructose that can be helpful in my opinion, in my opinion just for some energy. Um, and then the next thing we're looking at probably is we want to intake some amount of protein. It doesn't have to be super heavy, but just another protein feeding through the day, anywhere from 20 to 50 grams, just depending on the person, what you tolerate, what the sourcing is. So we knock that out. I like to include roughly 10, 15 grams of fat. Uh, that way we don't get an insulin drop. Like we don't get a huge drop in our blood glucose mid-workout. If we digest all those carbs super fast, we get a insulin spike and our blood sugar drops halfway through the workout uh, by adding a little bit of fat what we can do is we can slow down the digestion to make it a little bit more of a level release of insulin more level uh, blood glucose levels through the whole workout so that we don't crash towards the end so including a little bit of fat so we have carbs are first and foremost get a little bit of protein add a little fat to slow down your digestion uh, and then we want to make sure that we're intaking some definitely making sure we in, in taking a decent amount of uh, of sodium with this meal probably just salting to taste if it's like rice and meat that you're eating uh, with a little bit of oil on it or something so add a decent amount of salt potentially some potassium so maybe some spinach with it if it doesn't upset your stomach um, or just the fruit that i mentioned earlier more than likely whatever fruit you pick it's a decent sourcing of uh, potassium so that would be kind of my checklist uh, sodium and carbs are kind of the big ones for performance on the day, but you know, intaking your protein kind of matters, slowing down the digestion with the fat kind of matters. But if I were to pick two to focus on, it's kind of so salt and salt and carbs. Um, thank you guys for watching my video. I appreciate it. That was all the questions we had for today. Talk to you guys tomorrow.